Welcome to Business Blueprint Wednesday. My name is Philippe Dubray. I am your host for this webinar. It's a series of uh, discussions that we have regarding pretty much anything that has to do with running, uh, starting running, um, handling the business uh, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, or as an executive. And today, I want to talk to you about what well, you hear a lot about, about working on the business, not in the business. You hear a lot about this, right? It's like, okay, you're gonna work on the business, not in the business. And it's almost like a catchphrase, you hear that, which is very true, by the way. You do want to work on the business and not in the business. Why? Because you know, when you're on the business, you're actually operating the business. You're not uh, you know, in the business doing the actions, right? Frankly, there's always a certain amount of work that you will have to do in the business as a business owner. You pulled in and you move out, pull in and move out. But to really, truly be a business or uh, an entrepreneur or a CEO or a business owner, you, you need to be able to uh, be a little bit not into the, into the weeds, so as to speak, but actually operate the whole machine using the staff and using the, the the people that are supposed to be producing right so in the what does that mean to work in the business let's let's look at this first right okay what does that mean to work in the business is let's say you are a restaurant owner right and you come in the morning uh you you, you you're gonna do the prep for the uh you're going to be the prep for the uh, the food. Uh, you're going to be doing uh, some of the cooking. Uh, you might uh, do the, the wait on some of the some of the customers that are coming in. You're basically involved in the whole production area in either way or places. If you're in the construction, when that you might be uh, going to get materials for your your, your crew, or you might be. Um, right in there with your crew and working with them okay at a certain stage of of the game if you have a business you have to do this you have to work in the business but some some business owners some entrepreneur they get so stuck in this that they feel they cannot never they can never move out of that production unit because they're so ingrained in it right and they just they just cannot seem to do themselves out of that production so they can now be on the business and not in it, right? Obviously, this is what you want to do. And this is where you become more profitable as a business owner, okay? Um, but that requires some work. That requires some work. Now, what does that mean to really work on the business? Well, to work on the business, what you have to, it involves you being more like supervising the area. You think, thinking the big thought, um, uh, do the planning, making sure that, um, you know, you put a future there for your business, right? If you are working in the business, you're handling the day-to-day, -day, you're handling the day-to-day -day all the time, it's very hard for you to look really far and to, to drive a path or a roadmap for your business. So you do have to do a little bit of this, even if you are working on in the business itself, you do have to set some time so you can actually do that. You can operate the business, not be in the business doing the actions. You know what I mean? It's very, very important. Now, there are five things, five ingredients that uh, many business owners don't fully understand. And those who are successful and are working on the business are doing all the time, right? There are five ingredients, five key ingredients that really are part of working on the business not in the business. If you don't do these, you will find yourself just pulled in the weeds and having to do uh, the work yourself, okay? Now, what are these five uh, five ingredients, these five factors? Well, I'll tell you what they are, okay? Uh, the, the first one is observation. Okay, what does that mean, observation? That means that you need to have some raw data. You need to be able to have a pulse 
on your business. Now, how do you get a pulse on your business? Well, that's where statistics come in, right? Uh, otherwise known as key performance indicators, KPIs. Uh, sometimes I talked to, uh, the other day I was talking to one, to, to a, a business owner. He says, yeah, yeah, I, I work with uh, key performance indicators. I looked at uh, my, uh, my balance sheet, right? Or I look at uh, how much money is in my bank account, right? <laughs> which are okay, <laughs> but it's, it's really short-sighted, right? Uh, as a business owner, you need to have a set of key performance indicators of, of, of statistics that really allows you to understand what's going on. And these things should track from the beginning, from a lead, all the way through to the end of the cycle uh, with, your, with your clients, to the delivery of your product or services. And you should be able to track everything so you can see, you can observe. Okay, these are statistics, right? And that gives you a good image or a good, uh, good uh, information as to how your business is doing. But there's also like, you know, with your eyes, looking at the business itself, looking at the people, looking at, you know, where are things at, um, all of these various things. This, these are very important. Look. The, in, the observation aspect is very often missed when you take decisions, right? Um, if you have uh, somebody that assumes, then you have a problem, right? As, as, assuming is not observing. It's, you know, looking at a few things, then filling up the gap with whatever you think should be. And that's that's called assuming. And it's a very, very bad management method, right? You can you should never assume. You should always look and be certain of the information before you uh, take actions. But before you take action, there's another thing you need to do, which is called planning. This is the second element. You've got to be able to have a plan. You got to have a roadmap. You got to have in mind a series of action that needs to be done in order for you to get to where you want to go. If you don't have that roadmap, well, here's what's going to happen. You're going to start in the morning, you're going to do the work, you're going to go do the estimates or handle this or handle that, whatever, whoever, whichever wheel makes the more noise will get the oil, right? And at the end of the day, you're going to end up the day, you're going to be tired, you feel like you've worked a lot, see little effort, and then you're going to go the next day and start again and start again. This is like that daily grind that you don't want to get into, right? Who loves the daily grind? Said no one. <laughs> so what you want to do, you want to have a uh, a plan. You, have, you want to have a plan that is based on correct observations, right? So again, observation comes first. Then comes planning. That's your roadmap. Again, that allows you to work on the business, not in it, right? And your plan should identify the ideal scene, should identify your resources, and should have an in-sequence uh, planning or program to get you there, right? All the various establishment and production action that would need in order for you to get to where you want to go. If you do not have a precisely written plan, you are at the mercy of your environment. I'd like to tell you otherwise, but it isn't because you have nothing to guide against. So the, the wind's going to blow one way, well, then you're going to go that way. And then the wind's going to blow the other way, and then you're going to go <laughs> you're gonna blow the other way. And at the end of the year, you look at where the progress you've made and you go like, really? <laughs> that much progress? And that little progress is like, What's happened last year? Well, I'll tell you what happened last year. You didn't have a plan or you didn't stick to the plan or your plan was based on an assumption, not an observation, and therefore it never really got traction, okay? That's the second one. Now, I've seen people with, now hear me out here. I've seen people with gorgeous, gorgeous plan based on spot on observations that don't go anywhere. Why? Because the third ingredient is not there. And that is called communication, right? It's all in your head. You don't communicate to your staff or to your junior executive what you want done exactly. Well, how are they supposed to help you out? They can't, unless they read your mind. But again, by survey, 
there's not a lot of staff member or personnel or employees that can actually read the employer's mind, okay? So at this point, the idea of communication, and usually the communication should be done, especially for plans, programs, and projects, and various things, uh, including policies and processes, everything that's important for the operation of your of your business, for the growth of your business, or, you know, what are the targets that need to, what are the milestones that need to be achieved in order for you to make the progress that you need to make to be happy with where you're going with, the, with, with, with your business, right? All these milestones and how to get there should be in, in writing and distributed to the concerned personnel. This way they can back you up. This way they can help you. This way they can display initiative in a constructive manner to get to where you want to go, right? Um, I was talking to uh, to uh, another one of my clients and he was frustrated because their staff, one of their staff member was not, came up with some weird ideas that really was against where she wanted to go. And it was all frust there was lots of frustration. Why would the person do this? Well, all of that part of that personnel of that employee's good heart, she wanted to do something to contribute from her point of view, what she thought the executive of the business owners wanted. And the perception was wrong because the plan was not communicated properly, because the vision was not communicated properly, because the core values were not communicated properly, and the, the, the program to get there was not communicated, actually was not even done. Right? So we had to sit down and actually write the program so we can have agreement and communicate it with the staff. Now they can, now they can support you. So if you're reading this, right, if you're watching this video and you go like, man, I wish my staff would back me up a little bit more. Maybe you want to take a look at their planning. Is your planning based on accurate observation? Do you have good planning? And is your planning being communicated to your staff? If these three things haven't happened, well, guess what? You're going to end up being in there, in the weeds, working in the business, not on the business, because you don't get the support that you really need in order for you to be working on the business, okay? So that communication is very important. Now, if you can make, okay, so now, ingredient number four, you have, now you've got, you've got a beautiful plan. It's been communicated. Now is it, now it's going to get all done by itself? Hey, no. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, not because you just communicated it, now people will take a hold of this and will do it all without you supervising it. And supervision is your next ingredient that you really have to take. Like, you have to listen to this here. If It's not because you've communicated it that it's going to get done necessarily. If you have a pearl, yes, the person will run with it, right? But you still have to supervise it to bring about coordination with the other departments as well, right? It's extremely key. If you do not supervise the action, right? Here's, this, here's another very interesting fact that's often missed by uh, business owners, right? They think because they've communicated it, right? They've given it to the, 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 the personnel. This is what you need to do. And they think that now they're going to run with it and, 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 and go and get it done. Right, but here's what happens in the back in the back seat here right? in in the back end with the staff when they have that program. So they've been handed a beautiful program, right? That will work. That will get things done, and they go, "Oh yeah, this is great." So, and they go back to work, and they get hit by all these other demands all over the place because, well, that's part of the job, I guess. You know, and what happens with, now these things get the person's attention, all of these demands. Why? Because these things are necessary. They're hitting the, the, your employees' lines and the employees got to take care of them. So again, the greasy, the, the squeaky wheel will get the grease, okay? So if you don't supervise 
that program and get the, the, the staff to pay attention to this. And this is important. I need you to do this. And you don't communicate about it. Again, tell me, where is the action of the staff going to go? That's right. They will go to all of these other demands that the person has on a day-to-day -day basis. So you've got to include the attention to the program that you need to get done, to that planning that you want to get done as, a, as an owner to get you to where you want to go. So you can work on the business, not in the business. Otherwise, that beautiful program you have will have to be executed by who? Well, by you. And that's called running. That's called working in the business, not on the business. Okay, now the production is the, the fifth element. It's basically you got to pay your attention to the people who are actually getting things done. You have to be interested in them, making sure that, you know, uh, they understand what needs to be done. They're going to run into some problems. You're going to be there to coordinate with them. They got to make sure that they have what they need. All of these things as a business owner, you got to make sure that they have the wherewithal to produce it, right? And by putting attention on, Pay attention to your staff member, to your employees, making sure they go well, making sure they do good, making sure they are kept winning and encouraged. Then guess what? You're going to get more of this, right? You always get what you put your attention on, right? Somebody who's complaining that he's going broke, that everything is bad, that I can't get a good staff member, that, you know, it's so hard, right? That's that's the daily you know, a narrative that you get from a person like that. Well, guess what? That's what, they, that's what they're going to get. But somebody who's more positive, who put their attention on what needs to be done on getting wins and actually accomplishing things, then guess what? You're going to get more of that. So you get what you put your attention on. That's the law of the universe, so as to speak, right? Okay, good. That's number five. It's producers, production. Again, you've got to keep your eye on this in order for you to stay running on the business, not in the business, okay? Lastly is the users, the people who will benefit from the service or product that, you, that you're delivering. You have to keep your eye on this. Are, you know, are people happy with the, the, the services being, being, being delivered or the products being uh, you know, consumed by them? Always keep an eye on this. That's your uh, public relations, uh, customer satisfaction, uh, surveys, uh, making sure that what what your target market wants, or the, or the problems that your market your, your target market is having, you are constantly coming up with solutions to help them, right? Because again, at the end, that that organization, that business that you have, is supposed to solve problems for your consumers, for your clients, or your patients. So. You got, you got to work on the business. You have to be uh, constantly aware of what are the needs and wants of the people who will consume your services or products, right? Uh, some big companies who haven't done that is right off the bat, Blockbuster is, is one of them, right? Blockbuster used to uh, make videos and VHS, you know, like the tapes. <laughs> and they didn't listen to what the customers want. And they didn't pivot as their needs changed. Now they're not existing anymore, right? They're a footnote in the history. <laughs> so you don't want to become that. So as a business owner or as an executive, you want to, in order for you to stay working on the business, not in it, it's very important that you keep your attention on the on on the users as well the people that will consume your, your your products or your or your services okay extremely key now these are six elements that are extremely important that you need to understand these are key ingredients for you as a business owner as management to make planning become an actuality right and in order for you to work on the business, you got to start doing these at least a little bit every day or every week. Schedule, schedule yourself some time so you can actually look at your business, so you can do the observation, do the planning, do the communication to your staff, supervision of what's happening, be in communication with the people that are actually your employees, the people actually getting things done. Because again, that's so key. And the users as well, okay? 
And once, and the, the, the really truly good executive or business owners that have achieved that state, that they're constantly just working on the business, they have set up and they work on these key ingredients every day, right? It's almost like it's 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 your job <laughs> as a business owner to work on the business, to do the observation, to do the planning, communicate it, supervise the action, take care of your producers, and seeing that you know the users are happy. Okay, if you do that, you'll keep yourself out of the weeds. You're going to be working on the business, not in the business. Obviously, this happens on a gradient, and there's a there's a specific way to to lay this out for you as a business owner, which. I invite you to get in touch with me so we can do a business analysis. I'll put the link there if you want to. Um, you know, uh, it's free, free of charge. It's a business analysis. I would like to talk to you about your plans, your project, uh, you know, and the things you're running into. And maybe we could come up with some good solutions for you on this. Uh, so I'm going to put in the link in, in, in at the end here, I'm going to put the link to schedule a business uh business structure integrity analysis with me so you can uh, schedule that in and then we can talk about this okay all right that's pretty much all i want to talk to you about today uh those six key elements to work on the business not in the business and um thank you very much for watching the, this presentation this discussion and i'm looking forward to see you next week on the next episode of business blueprint wednesday thank you very much Bye for now.